in my own situation. God already told me that he was trying to shift me. But I was so focused on playing when big things were about to happen, brothers. Make it twice as bad. My daughter, I'll never forget the date. She was just a baby. Must have been maybe a year or younger. Maybe seven months. I couldn't even help my wife change a dirty diaper. Big man full of faith and power couldn't even change a dirty diaper. You know why? I figured it out. God was trying to get me to clean up my own mess. He said, I'm going to show you how helpless you are. You can't fix your daughters, change her doctor, and you can't even fix your own mess. Meanwhile, I'm just starting to pray. And uh, while I'm praying, I get a call from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Didn't know anybody there, never been there, never had a desire to go there. And it was a pastor from a predominantly white church who had heard from a friend of a friend that I might be an answer to his staff problem. He said, well, can you come up sometime next month? It was right around June at that time. I said, I would love to come, brothers. But right now,
on the wall. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Can I keep it playing? Yes, sir. My wife reminded me the other day, and I hated to admit it. <laughs> your brothers and wives will make you think about things that you thought you had buried. You know, she said it, but not quite in these words that I'm going to put it. She said, honey, you know, you, you, you try to be real with the people when you haven't quite told the whole story. And, and, and the other part of the story, Bishop, is that I had a divorce. I thought that would get your attention. into pieces as my daughter was talking and opening up with her remarks. And then I had to remember that when I was 12, my parents had a divorce and how it affected me as a 12-year-old and how it shaped my life. That's why today I keep telling God, God, keep me on the power wheel. Because I thought I was fixed and whole, but I still see that there's some cracks in my life. From the divorce that my parents had as a 12 year old, and I'm 60 years old now. And there's still some parts of my heart. That if God didn't touch me, Bishop, I would never find the strength to touch him back. So my divorce, I'm sure many of you are anxious to hear all the details, right, as the world turns. Yeah, my first divorce was from my first church. My first church was a, was a beautiful church. One of the largest churches in the city of Milwaukee. I was the first African American in the history of the church. That was 70 years old. It was the largest church in the Assemblies of God pastored by an African American male. I found a patriarch who had been at that church for 25 years. He called me to be the director of Christian education, but little did I know I would become the senior pastor. With the help of my wife, we began to conquer mountains and do things that the city had never ever seen. All by the grace and mercy of God. But how many know that things just happen? Why you're busy living? Yes, Life happens, yes, and suddenly I realized that there was a need to file papers <laughs> to submit my resignation to that my first wife, the church. <laughs> the hardest day of my life. Seven, almost eight years. One of the largest churches in Milwaukee. I started to think, well, my wife says, honey, you have to come to full grips with everything in your life. And it suddenly dawned on me, you know what? I've never really had a deep, deep down conversation with my children about how that first divorce affected their lives. I'm going somewhere, brothers. I'm going somewhere. I never talked to my kids who never asked to be a part of my call. My kids never asked to be a part of my crises at the crossroad. All they wanted was just some tears 
so that life would go on and be normal again. How many of you just cried a little cry saying, I just want my life to be normal? So it is. I learned many life lessons as a result of that divorce. One in which still resonates, and that is, I have to remember that, that God wants to see us in every season of our lives. And those seasons come and go. But there are three seasons that God said would last forever. Three times a year, man, God says, I want you to come and see me at the temple, in the tabernacle, so that you and I can have a face-to-face, -face, man to man talk. Three feasts. God says, when you come, don't come empty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bring something when my daughter talked about sacrificing. It, 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 God said, when you're down to nothing, know that I'm up to something. But God is going to make a sacrifice. If you have nothing, just sacrifice your life. So I started to feel good about that first divorce. I was getting help, healing, life lessons. Only to recall my second and last divorce after a 10 year marriage to our other church where we took it to the next level and beyond that was the divorce that caused us to shift from Milwaukee back to Michigan and once again I had to ask the question how is this divorce different than the first and how has it impacted my children? I'll never forget the first Sunday after that brutal divorce which if I had to listen to my wife it wouldn't have to have been so painful. She said, honey, our time is winding down. I said, honey, I feel like I've got the strength of day that I can run through a troop. I can leap over a wall. How would you expect me to leave that which we have built now? She said, honey, I don't understand, but all I can tell you is that our time winding down. Because I put my heels in the ground when the deep fasting and prayer rebuked every devil in hell <laughs> only to know that the river, Pastor Carter was drying up and the word that my wife spoke to me was coming. I said, God, I, I don't understand. I understood the first divorce, but I don't understand this second divorce. Ladies, how many of you have ever had that kind of conversation with the Lord in your private time? Now, I remember the first Sunday after that divorce, we had a house service. And I went down to the basement. And I had purchased four pans, plastic little pans. And I filled them all with warm water. And with towel over my shoulder, brothers. And I don't know whether they remember, but I believe I washed everybody's. 
of humility. Say, so God, I don't understand it all. I'm quite certain that my children understand maybe less than I. So, brothers, I ask you to follow me as I follow Christ. So the goal is to lift the crisis off of your life so you can release the blessing into your house. So, more than ever before, I learned the power This is what they call a pali, a prayer shawl, but it literally means little tent, little tent. That's why when God says go into your prayer closet, he wasn't talking about a little closet. He was thinking about a little tent. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. I will be done. Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. I learned that uh, in the midst of the battle, I needed my sword and the power of prayer. And I couldn't afford to leave one of them behind. I'm going to ask my family if they would just please join me on the platform. Brothers, I only ask you to follow me as I follow Christ. had to do what all men of valor do. And that is just not come, brothers, to the temple so that you can see the face of God in the eyes of the Lord. But at some point, you got to break your whole family. And what I realize is that in the midst of two divorces, that I had a family. 